Hey guys, it's Marissa from Grow in the Flow, and it's been a minute. I have not been in here for a while, and I was just taking a ride here in my chariot, thinking chariot thoughts because 2023 has rolled right up in here as the year of the chariot, and we've talked a lot about that, um, but the references won't stop. Uh, so many people in my orbit um, having chariot energy coming in for them in so many different ways. And so as I sit here in my chariot on a rainy day, it is the full moon in Cancer, the first full moon of the year. And um, really reflecting on what is coming up with this full moon, because of course, Cancer bringing us very deeply in touch with emotion, with the element of water and flow and the moon herself being very at home in the sign of Cancer, you know, really makes it um, uh, potent for a lot of emotional layers uh, bubbling up to the surface and peeling back of those uh, layers in order to get at things that are sort of washing up and coming up um, that can be a little touchy, a little pinchy uh, with the crab energy. And so that kind of brought to mind for me, many moons ago, uh, I had done a little reel on here uh, that brought forward one of my favorite analogies uh, that I was given. And it was about family is my rock. And uh, many of you have heard this analogy. It's beautiful. Um, it came through to me because I have this piece of selenite that is etched with the words, family is my rock. And reflecting on that, it was like, okay, yeah, I get that. You know, family is my rock, as in my source of support, of a uh, touchstone when all else, you know, all those things that hopefully uh, that is the way that family would be, whether it's our, you know, blood family, chosen family, whatever support systems we have. At the same time, <laughs> family of all kinds can also be like literally banging up against the rock. The thing that is like, you know, driving you crazy because it's creating, um, obstacles, creating challenges, creating things that trigger in us, right? And so um, it, it speaks to the idea that our people, you know, the people that are in our orbit, that are a part of our network, are our rock because they provide for us exactly what we need on soul level. And that's the thing. That's been the, dis the distinguishing factor in the messages that I've been getting so far for 2023 is that it's not necessarily what my ego wants. It's not necessarily the goals of my ego that we're talking about, my ego self. We're talking about my soul self, my higher self. Uh, so when I'm here in my chariot, in my ego state, which I don't know about you, but there's something about when we get behind the wheel that often allows us to sort of like check out in a way, like if I'm chatting with someone when I'm driving, you know, it's like taxi cab confessions. It's like, I'm just free flowing because you kind of just go into this, you know, uh, mindset where we just flow with our true feelings and, and they're more unfiltered often than, you know, how we kind of sometimes try to very carefully choose our words in other settings, perhaps. Um, so then I'm very much in my ego self, like who's in the driver's seat? Because when I'm in my ego, uh, that person, that situation is driving me crazy. It's irritating. It's frustrating. It's maddening. I don't want that. Why would I choose that? Why would I need that? And yet at soul level, the person, the situation that is provoking me, that is coming up and blocking me, making me feel like I can't, it's a barrier, you know, it's this rock that I'm banging up against, um, could be precisely what I need in order to evoke in me the awareness of something that's coming up to be seen, healed, integrated, transmuted, released, forgiven, you know, it's, it's like, would it come into my awareness that this thing, uh, is here, were it not for this rock, 
<laughs> you know? And so I see that play out over and over and over and over again. Ever since um, that came through for me, family is my rock. It's a phrase that now, uh, you know, many people in my orbit, we use just to simply say, girl, they're driving me crazy because you know family is my rock, you know? And yet it's like, yeah, I get that because um, I have seen it, how it plays out. And it's a lens that I can pick up. So when I feel the familiar pinchiness of somebody irking me or feeling irritated, annoyed, put out, um, I can say, whoa, wait a second. I recognize this pinchy feeling. Let me sit here with this for a sec and pick up my lens that says, what is this showing up to teach me, to show me, you know, what, what is this about that this person or this situation is triggering me, irritating me in this way? Why? What, you know, what, what is this reflecting back to me? And so family gives us just what we need at soul level to bring in the potential for great healing, growth, transformation, expansion on soul level. So when your ego self is behind the wheel and we need to sort of pass it over, <laughs> um, recognize those patterns, recognize those triggers, those things that are driving you crazy, um, and sit with that. And I would say I'm just looking at my day so far to see how it shows up in like the most mundane of ways. Okay. So it's raining, it's gloomy, it's Friday. I have a ton of work to do. I'm working on a number of sessions right now. I have, my day is in my mind. Well, you know, my daughter needs a ride to school. She's going in late. She, her friend overslept. She doesn't have a ride. She needs a ride. Fine. Let me stop what I'm doing and take you no problem. But meanwhile, you know, my husband isn't feeling great. So it has him sort of laid up in the room where I'm planning to go do my work all day. <laughs> so as I drive my chariot uh, and we're stuck in traffic because everybody else also overslept or is going to school late, uh, we're all sitting in this traffic and it's like minutes of my day that are passing. But in that time, we got to chat. I got to talk to my daughter and catch up with her a little more and, you know, discuss some things that, you know, we needed to know about for planning our day in this weekend or whatever, you know. And now um, I'm sitting in the car dragging my heels because I know when I go in uh, to my space and I want to get started, I'm going to have to very gingerly uh, m move and maneuver my plans, which again, I, I care for the fact that my husband isn't feeling well, but it's also throwing a wrench in my day, right? So from one perspective, it's like, okay, I wanted to get my day started. I wanted to get moving. And here I am getting put out by people who have me doing things that weren't in my, on my agenda, right? But it's making me pause. It's bringing me here to create this, you know, this space to have this chat with you, to share these insights with you that may help you in some way, or, you know, bring an awareness into you uh, about how your day might be playing out or your week or your year that just passed. And as you reflect back on all of that, and you look at all of the people, places, and things that maybe really drove you nuts felt like they were blocking you, these rocks that come up in your path that had to reroute you. Um, and again, chariot references, because we're really getting these messages about in what way have all of those things served, the detours, the reroutes, the traffic delays, all of these, you know, mobile type references of moving, movement, or lack of movement, uh, enable us to see how uh, it's the very thing that actually led us to a completely new path or something came through that maybe would not have otherwise come through, you know? And so um, also I'm looking at, well, uh, how else might I be able to do my work? Is there some other room, some other space, some other way? Uh, might the energy be different in another space that I go in now and try out, you know? Yeah, it, it's annoying. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. All my stuff's ready to go. That's not what I want to do. My ego self, right? My ego self. But my higher self in my soul 
seat here at behind the wheel, I recognize that there's an opportunity for me to see that I may not have realized that I actually really love the energy in this other room or in this other space or in this other way or the particular session that I'm facilitating might be better served in another space that I would not have even known had it not been for the man flu. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I hope my husband is feeling okay. Uh, and I don't mean to, uh, to minimize that in any way, but I'm just trying to bring a little lightness into what can sometimes feel very heavy. And if you're feeling very intensely the effects of this full moon, to be gentle with yourself, to, to take some time to um, really check in with this feeling, this emotion that's bubbling up and just detaching from it in order to observe it as best you can from a higher perspective that says, what might this thing be coming up to show me? How may this be serving me? Um, and journaling is good. Um, you can even try something like record a little video diary, talk to yourself. Um, there's something about the face to face of looking at yourself and, and being able to reflect and project and say, um, have a little chariot chat with yourself. You know, when you're in your car and you're safely parked in a place, uh, maybe take some time to just spitball a little bit about what's going on, what came up, a little bit of a taxi cab confession and from the chariot. And I'm feeling a little something brewing here. I'm thinking I might do some recurring chariot chats because I spent a lot of time in mom's taxi. And I think that, again, sometimes the best aha moments and ideas come from that ability to just kind of numb out, like to check out and just allow yourself to receive what's coming in as you're rolling in your chariot. And then, um, again, it's like this meeting of, ego self and higher self coming together um, and, and delivering for you these messages. So that's what's rolling up for me right now. I am going to uh, go inside and see what's cooking for the rest of my day, but I'm going to do it with uh, through the lens of curiosity to see where does this lead? What is this coming up to show me? What, what new ways and innovative um things might be coming up to show me uh, new paths, new ways to get there. Um, and I'm grateful for that, you know, and to be in that space, uh, even if it's feeling um, any type of way. <laughs> so I am wishing you many full moon blessings uh, using this energy right now to help you to move through on the other side of this from all of my sessions so far and the messages that I've been pulling in for 2023. It really feels like a very transformative month on the other end. Like currently we might still feel like we're in this lingering uh, 13th month you know, still moving through and reconciling a lot of the things that have come up through these, the season of retrograde. Uh, uh, here we are with this cancer full moon. So if we're feeling foggy, if we're feeling like communications are challenged, if we're feeling uh, a little disconnect par for the course, right? It's a part of the path that we are on moving through that using our tools on the other side. I'm seeing that the January that we end with maybe drastically different from the January that we might be sitting in right now. So have that curious mindset to be out there looking for adventure or whatever comes your way, right? So happy new moon, happy new year. We will talk soon. Take good care.